This is the social media tip of the week, and we are live here on Facebook and inside the Church Marketers Group and doing this a little bit different. We're doing a live interview with Raquel. So Raquel, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the church you're, you're a part of to, to set this up? Yeah, for sure. First thing, hi, everyone. Good afternoon or morning, wherever you might be right now. Uh, like Ryan said, my name is Raquel Serrano. Um, I'm here from Chicago, Illinois, born and raised. Um, and I am the communications manager for Project New Life Chicago, or as we say, Projeto Vida Nova Chicago. Uh, we are a predominantly Brazilian church here in the city. Um, a little uh, petite congregation of about 50 or so, but, you know, we're a loving family, we're building, we're growing, we're trying to impact our community, impact the city. Um, and, you know, I'm happy to be here, uh, happy to be a part of the ministry that I'm involved in. Um, and thankfully, um, I'm in a position that allows me to learn a lot um, when it comes to marketing and social media for churches like mine, small and or bilingual. Uh, so I'm happy to be here. Very cool. Yeah. And that's the topic today. Bilingual churches, multilingual churches, and then what that looks like on social media. Because I know you and I are part of a couple groups. Yes. And that topic comes up. <laughs> and um, I haven't ever really had a great answer for people because um, we do tips, you know, every single week. And sometimes people are asking, well, what about um, bilingual or, or multilingual churches? And so you had a great tip. So why don't we start before we get into the tip with... Um, what are some of the unique challenges out there when it comes to a multilingual church and social media? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. So um, off the bat, obviously, if you're a multilingual church, if you're running two languages, whether it's English and Spanish, whether it's English and Portuguese like mine, um, any type of multilingual bilingual church is going to run into the issue of how do you communicate with your members and uh, potential first time visitors and members online in the language that uh, best fits them. So um, hmm. if we work with Facebook pages, let's say, or um, just basically any social media, if you go ahead, you put up one post promoting an event that you have going on, uh, you have to make the decision. Do I write this post in one language or do I put translations for every uh, translations for every relevant language to that post and the same thing. And that's where you have these mm. really long, bulky messages, two, three paragraphs long. Um, maybe the English takes up all of the top, what's seen usually on the feed. And then maybe your Spanish speakers have to press see more. Maybe they don't. So they there's a chance that they never get that message. Um, same thing with images and with graphic designs. Um, when it comes to your copy, do you put two languages? Is that too crowded? Do you only put one? Do you run the risk of excluding yep. another? Um, when it comes to social media and bilingual churches, there's a lot that you have to balance out. It's honestly just trying to figure out the most efficient way possible to keep things clean, to keep things organized, but to still share the message that you're trying to share. Yeah. And so that that's a great setup, but it also leads into the tip that you uh, kind of were promoting out there. And so right. I wanted to really share that with our audience as well. So why don't you tell me a little bit about the that feature that you discovered and are sharing when it comes to Facebook and how you can turn that on and, and what that really is. So give us an overview on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it was actually something that my pastor discovered. Um, I took over our church's uh, social media and just marketing efforts completely in March of this year. And before I did, he was the one running the Facebook page. And I remember one day uh, for Easter, he had this promo rolling out and I saw a feature that uh, gave you an option to change the message language. And it says show in English, show in Portuguese. And I was like, wait, What's this? So I started looking into it and I saw that Facebook pages now have the option uh, for you not to rely on the automatic translating that the page will do for you. You can add uh, your own translation or better said your own message. Um, and depending on the default language of a person's Facebook account, that's the message that they'll see. Um, so in my case, obviously we'll be using English and Portuguese. If I have a graphic that has Portuguese text, the copies in Portuguese, what I will do then is for the Portuguese message, just write 
the regular promotional message that I want to put. We'll see you here. You know, bring mm -hmm. this, bring that, the usual. For the English message, I can tailor that to that English speaking community. I will put the translation to the graphics, some of the more important details there in case um, Maybe the English speaker isn't able to grab the context just by looking at the graphic. Um, put the details there, the translation of it, and then the same message as the Portuguese in English. Um, this allows churches to not depend on that default automatic translating that Facebook will do for us sometimes. Um, because as mm -hmm. we've heard, the same thing with Facebook, the same thing with Google Translate, these translations aren't always the best. <laughs> They're not very <laughs> accurate. Um, you know, it, it gives churches the opportunity to speak to more than one community, more than one audience, um, and give it that personal touch, which I think is so important, especially as, as churches. When we do our Facebook pages, it's not just a, a platform for us to just promote and, you know, kind of spam people with, with what we want to invite them to. It's a place where we connect uh, in the same way we would inside the church building, but online. Um, so I think yeah. that personal touch is so important and to be able to do that without relying on, on AI and all of that, just give them the personal touch and be able to reach so many people. Yeah, that's really cool. So I'm curious, does it basically, the Facebook look at a individual, see what language they have set as their default. Yes. And then if they come to a post with this feature turned on and you've done the translation, it automatically just shows them that translation, right? Automatically. It's the coolest thing in the world. I, I love showing people in my congregation. I'll have two people pull out their phones and then one, I know that there's a set of Portuguese and I know the other set of English. I'll have them look at the same Facebook page post and they will look at me and be like, that is so cool. They will see two different messages depending on the default language. So on Facebook, if you're on the desktop, you see in that corner of the sidebar, it says English, Spanish, French, um, whatever language that you have your account set on, that you see hmm. all of your buttons, you see all of your other, um, everything in your newsfeed, whatever is the main language on the overall account, that's the language that will be shown to you if um, a page has provided a translation for that language. I love it. Do yeah. you know, I'm curious, I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball out at you. Do you know yeah, what this works with um, captions? Like when you, uh, when people are captioning videos, mm -hmm. is, does Facebook automatically tran try to translate that? Can you upload multiple uh, captions that have the same effect? So what I've noticed so far when it comes to putting captions on videos, my way of doing it is to um, upload the SRT, mm -hmm. the SRT file into the video and then the captions show. Um, from what I've noticed, Facebook does not offer automatic translations on those yet. Okay. I'm crossing my fingers on it, um, but that would be another good tip very bilingual church. If you have a video up of a sermon or of a message that's in one language, um, creating that SRT file and then uploading it to your video in the other language that you know is predominant in your congregation will allow both to be able to watch the video and understand what's going on. So definitely a good use of adding captions to a video. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Let me also just say this too. Raquel has done the hard work of walking you step by step on how to do this. Um, we've posted this as a guest blog post over at Social Church, and she's done a great job with images. Step step one, two, three, four. You know, it's easy to follow. It shows you how to turn the feature on and how to actually go through that with a post. So thank you so much for doing that. No, what, I I'm curious. What other, would you have any other tips, insights um, when it comes to other social media managers that are kind of facing this challenge? Because it's hard yeah. enough trying to figure out social media for churches, especially a lot of people doing it on the side, um, you know, right. let alone trying to do it for in multiple languages. So any right. other tips, insights, ideas that you, you found along the way? Yes, definitely. Um, first things first, I want to start off with some encouragement. Um, mm. As someone who works full time and ha and does the social media on the side, I mean, the amount of time that I put into it, this is, I call this my full time job. It's what I love to do. This is my ministry. Yeah. Um, but it can be so hard sometimes finding the time and the energy and, and even the wisdom and understanding what's the right move to make. Um, 
you know, first thing I would say is, you know, it's okay, you're not alone, we've got your back. And a big helpful tip would be uh, take a look at your audience, your church audience. Um, something that we discuss here and in a lot of other groups is that your church cannot be all for all people. Um, there has to be that you you will have an idea pretty much of who your church attracts, who does God send to your church, what kind of, not only in demographics as in age and maybe nationality or language, but, you know, um, just every type of area and aspect, like my church is really big on family. Hmm. So the people we see drawn mostly to our church are people either with growing families or um, they need healing in that area. Um, so that's kind of our specialty. Um, but when it comes to language, you don't want to push yourself to do too much if you don't have to. If you know without a doubt that your congregation is English, Spanish, or whatever other language combination, then that's what you focus on. If mm -hmm. you are having, um, if you or your pastor have this vision for um, attracting a new community, attracting a new audience, a new demographic, then you want to go ahead and begin working on that. But I would suggest slowly, especially mm -hmm. if you're already working bilingual or trilingual in some cases. Um, you know, we want to reach out to the new communities for sure, but um, being able to reach people on social media in different languages, it's hard as it is. Um, so I would definitely suggest take a really good, realistic look at who your audience is. Focus on that. Um, if you already have a bilingual audience and you haven't transitioned into doing bilingual social media management, then uh, my, my uh, suggestion would be, of course, start on Facebook. Facebook is already starting to make it easy for you with the Facebook pages. Um, one of these days, I'm hoping soon, Facebook groups will be hmm. able to have uh, that translation feature. Yeah. Um, from there, uh, maybe start Twitter. On Twitter, what I've noticed helps a lot is that if you're using short phrases, just put them on the same tweet. Um, and then if you're using uh, bigger chunks of text, you're gonna have to double post. So one mm. English, one Spanish, back to back. Um, and then that makes it easier for your audience. The Spanish speakers will like and retweet the Spanish tweet. Uh, your English speakers will like the other one. And that's how that'll work out. On Instagram, uh, make use of the space on Instagram. We can use so many characters that it just, it doesn't really hurt. <laughs> You're and, popular. <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> um, on Instagram, what I'll do is that, again, I don't rely on the automatic translation. Uh, you put the text that you need uh, the people to see the most. If it's a, if you know it's going to be a Brazilian event, you want the Portuguese up top. You put the English at oh. the bottom. Use a combo of hashtags that will reach both audiences. Um, you know, it being bilingual on social media, promoting your church, promoting your ministries, your services, um, it takes a lot of work. It takes a yeah. lot of work, a lot of dedication, a lot of time, a lot of perseverance. Um, but it's possible. It's You have to do a bit more extra work than if you were just monolingual, but you can do it. And I promise, I mean, the effects have been so life-changing, not only for us, our congregation, but for the people who have been able to find us. Um, I mean, in our case, we have Brazilians who will say, oh, you know, we, we just got approved to come over, and but we don't have a church here. We don't know where there are other Brazilians. You know, we're starting a family. And for them to be able to go on Facebook and find not only English posts, but posts in their language, um, and to know that we can reach out to them in that same way, it means so much to them. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. And one of the things we're huge at here at Social Church is the idea on social media that we're thoughtful. Mm -hmm. right? And we carry that over when we talk about people and the, the guest experience as well. But when you're doing the hard work of those translations and people see that, they immediately say, hey, they're thinking about me. Exactly. They, they care enough about me to think about it, to, to target it for me, to make it easy for me. So I, I think that's just a huge principle in social media in general is just that thoughtfulness that's, that just communicates so much. Um, I want to jump over really quick and again, another curveball, but you handled yeah, that sure. one. You handled that one really well. <laughs> but as someone who's doing this, um, you kind of jokingly said, kind of, you, you'd sound like you've got two full time jobs. Um, and your pastor <laughs> was, was doing this, uh, mm -hmm. maybe before you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, 
another thing that we're really big on is encouraging churches and other pastors to do the, exactly what your pastor has done. Mm. Uh, help bring up, up other people in the church, in the ministry, and empower them to help them run their social media accounts. Right. Um, sometimes that's volunteers. Sometimes that's interns. Sometimes that's staff. But any tips you would have for other volunteers or people who like feel like they've got two full time jobs right. on how to how to manage it? How do you approach it? How do you work with um, like your lead pastor? And I'm not saying you have to cover all that, but mm. is there anything that's really stood out in your journey that you would say, hey, let's share this a- as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, my. You know, my pastor, like all other pastors, works so hard to try mm. to do his absolute best to uh, keep the church running, to keep the people uh, healthy, you know, well fed in a spiritual sense. And um, when I got to take over to social media, it was a privilege for me to know mm. to know that I could do what I knew I was passionate about, to do what I believed that God had equipped me for. Um, and to be able to take something off of their plate, you know, but um, something that I would definitely um, suggest for any other volunteers um, or anyone else working, maybe even full time or anything like that um, to manage their church's uh, social media is um, I would pray always and always for humility. Um, hmm. And it was a really, really important lesson for me, especially um, it's it's a recent one uh, for me this last weekend <laughs> and everything. Um, you know, we when we're at a church, um, we have these God given leaders and, um, you know, it's our job to help them in the calling that they have in the ministry that they have. And even if what we do is behind a computer, um, we have an impact and. Um, just the humility to recognize our leaders, the humility to understand, um, to be able to fully really feel the impact that our efforts are having on the world, that um, that things aren't always easy. You might not always agree. Maybe your pastor has a hard time letting go of the social media. Pray for humility. Hmm. Maybe um, there's no room in the budget to make room for scheduling tools or Photoshop or anything like that. I would pray for humility. Any In any situation that I felt like I didn't exactly have everything that I needed, I prayed for humility, um, mm-hmm. humility for this mission, humility before God, humility before my leaders, and then take what you have and run with it. Try to make the absolute best of what's been given to you. Um, and if more is given to you, that is great. If you are stuck with what you have, you can do it. You can yeah. most definitely, definitely do it. But that would be that would be my heart suggestion. It would be just, you know, constantly pray um, that you never become too frustrated or too dissatisfied that um, you can't see the efforts and the effects behind your ministry and things like that. Just humility. That would be my suggestion. <laughs> I, I love it. That you knocked that out of the park as well. That is awesome. That is a huge tip. Maybe the best tip of the week we've ever had. Oh my gosh. And it comes well, on, on the heels of not even the topic we really started off with. So um, that is awesome. Yeah, definitely a prayer that we all could, could pray because there's all those times when you're working with anybody else, especially under, under leadership, that humility is so important. Yes. And, and to think that it's not, because I think by nature, social media managers are kind of like, feel like, hey, we want to help get the word out. We, we're doing everything we can. Right. And then when we hit those obstacles or, wow. or pain points or other issues or like leadership didn't love our idea and like, we're, we're like, well, but it would be, you know, right. it worked so yeah. awesome. You know, it's it goes back to that humility you know so that's so so important so yes and 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 i'm so thankful so thankful i love my pastors they they are leaders that i feel fully 1000 percent confident that i can stand behind and follow um but you know you still need you still need it so Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely Absolutely. Well, as we wrap this up, any other, man, you've just been a wisdom of, of tips <laughs> on tips. So anything else at, to, that you throw out to the audience as we kind of wrap this tip up? Oh, man. Um, you know, big or small, monolingual, bilingual, multilingual, um, your church 
is doing an amazing work, an amazing job. We are reaching lives. We are being the hands and feet of God. And, and I know that nowadays, especially people can't see that with social media. Um, there are still some churches that, um, you know, they're turning their backs on it. They're saying that they don't need it. They don't want it. They don't. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not, that's not the case. We, as social media managers, as, as marketing um, professionals, what we're doing is being just an extension of what the church always has been. Um, this is that new generation reaching the nations. And it's not a replacement for face-to-face. Uh, -face. It's not a replacement mm. ever for meeting physically in the church house. But, you know, this is, this is ministry. Don't you ever let anyone tell you otherwise. This yeah. is... This is your ministry. This is this is easily what God has called you to do, and and your work is making an impact. Your work is worth the effort. You're doing great. Keep going. We're okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And that is we're recording this on a Wednesday, that midweek. So that that's the perfect encouragement, I think, for a lot of people to get to get through the week. Yes, so yes. we're okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, this, this has been awesome. And I, I'm excited to follow along in uh, your journey. So as you're finding tips, you've got such a generous heart to share these with other people. I really appreciate that about you. So I'm excited. Anytime you're learning, let me know because we will be happy to share it with uh, with our audience. That's what we love to do. No, for sure. And I'd be more than happy to share for it. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. God bless. All right. God bless, guys. Thanks.